so many interesting things happened over the last week and uh, this is actually supposed to be a video about weather bees just because of the volume of questions about weather bees and I think if I'm not wrong I did make a weather bee video but in the meantime I have another weather bee and I thought well maybe the first video wasn't very good uh, maybe this one won't be very good either but I thought I'll, I'll make a weather bee video but in the meantime um, I was looking at these military surplus rifles that I have in the vault. So, you know, some of them I bought and I just never looked at them. And I have the coolest thing to share with you. So I took the butt plate off, off of one of these Canadian 303s, you know, the brass type butt plate. And rolled up inside um, was um, what looked like a scroll. I thought it was maybe somebody's name and address. I've seen that before or just a poem or something like that. But in this case, um, we'll film it in a second. It's Dominion of Canada, Ottawa, March 17th, 1917. It's really cool. So um, I took an iron and flattened it out as best I could. But that was kind of a bonus in that rifle. It would be really neat to, of course, know the circumstances of how it ended up in there and what it meant. But I'll have to look that up and see what that all means. Anyway, sometimes as a collector, you encounter things like that. And then the second thing I thought I'd share with you is um, another rifle, so $150, the, the usual uh, surplus, um, very inexpensive miles. Now, it doesn't look like much, but you know the things that catch my eye or it's got a decent walnut stock. Uh, it had these scope mounts on it, but I'm reaching a point here. Um, it has the cupped butt plate. Uh, I always like that. You can see some wood has been removed, but that doesn't bother me. The bore is excellent, uh, mainly because it's an Israeli Mauser. You can see 7.62 on the front receiver ring. Uh, so anyway, that uh, that's all interesting and it's a good action. I mean, it, it has holes and so on. This, this is not a collector rifle. I'm sure it'll be a good shooter. Somebody modified the bolt handle as well. Uh, anyway, it had the scope mounts on, these big blocky ones. So I took the front receiver ring scope mount off. And as you may or may not know, there are manufacturer's codes on most Mauser 98s. So it's hard to show up on film and I tried to use that white out and then white fingernail polish and so on. Anyway, it's it's a Mauser and it's a Zauer and Son, Zauer and Sons, um, Mauser 98. So I mean, again, it's it is what it is. But for 150 dollars, uh, you can't really go wrong. Now I have to find a rear sight and I have to find a front sight, uh, which is kind of part of the adventure. Anyway, that, that's just a footnote to the whole thing. Um, so as far as weather bees go, it sounds like a lot of you love weather bees. And I, I have to say, I remember when I had no money and no guns, I would read about weather bees and I would think this is the only way to go. And uh, actually, I'll share with you this book. I think I'll store that money inside my weather bee book. That's a good book to read if you're interested in in Weatherby um, and the history of the man, just a remarkable entrepreneur. And the long and short of the whole story is, um, I guess Roy Weatherby could see that there's an advantage in having a flatter trajectory. And we could probably have three or four videos on ballistics and trajectory. I took a great interest in this, like mathematically and so on. But that gets a little boring on a YouTube video, and I'm on the ragged edge of uh, watchable as it is. So I thought, well, um, I won't talk about that. But what he did do, which wasn't necessarily revolutionary, but he introduced a line of cartridges that shoot just a little bit flatter. Now, most of us know that if you drop a, a bullet out of your hand, it'll hit the ground at exactly the same time as the bullet that you fired out of your rifle and it's traveled a mile and a half. Gravity is constant. But if you can cover a lot of ground in the time 
that the bullet's falling, you get a ballistic advantage, like a trajectory advantage. So um, I'll simplify the story. First Weatherby I owned was this one. This is, I don't own the rifle anymore. I bought the rifle and I bought all this ammunition. It came with the rifle, 224 Weatherby Magnum. And you probably never even heard of that cartridge. So I put it on this board here. That's the 224. And this, I put the 222. Actually, I can't even remember why I put the 222 here. Maybe for comparison, that's probably it. Uh, so you can see the Weatherby carries, has a lot more room for powder. More powder, generally speaking, means more velocity and flatter tra trajectory. So you're trying to outsmart gravity all the time. This is the 300 Weatherby Magnum. And you won't believe it, but I went out and bought a new box of 300 Weatherby ammo so that I'd have some nice looking cartridges to show you. And uh, I can't find that box of cartridges, so I cleaned up an old reload. That's why it looks a little odd. Or maybe it doesn't on the video, I don't know. But that's 300 Weatherby, and evidently that was one of the last or the last of his necked... Um, no, it's not necked up. He increased the powder capacity by moving the shoulder forward. This is the 300 Holland and Holland. And this was the cartridge that Roy Weatherby, this one here, must have handled a lot. And he knew that the 300 H&H &H offered more velocity than a 30-06. So he thought, well, what if we move the shoulder up? He gives it sort of a double radius. You can see it's not a sharp shoulder here give us more room for powder, give us more velocity. And that he accomplished, I think, in 1944, but don't quote me. And he's got a whole family of cartridges, 270 Weatherby. Unfortunately, Roy's not with us anymore, but his son is, and doing a fantastic job running Weatherby. So anyway, the idea was, buy my rifles, buy my cartridges, they offer more velocity, better trajectory, more energy on target, and you're more likely to hit your target. So these were the concepts of Roy Weatherby. He was a tremendous promoter. There are pictures of him with presidents and you know notable people, um, which makes it seem as if a president or somebody notable gets the rifle, then we should too. And maybe we should, I don't know. Uh, but 300 Weatherby, very impressive. I had one of those, but first was that 224. I should mention that comes in a smaller uh, version of the Weatherby rifle and the action, the Mark V action. I don't have one here, but I think it had six locking lugs, but I do have the Weatherby Mark V. So he, I, I'm making this sum up somewhat, but I think Roy must have thought, well, if you've got a super fantastic line of cartridges, you need a super fantastic rifle and the, the Mark V action is the action that he originally got Zauer to make in Germany, if I'm not wrong. And this is the Mark V. It had, I took, obviously I took it out of the stock. It has everything you would want in an action, except maybe control round feed. It's a massive, heavy, strong action. Move this stuff away. Uh, nine locking lugs, it's very smooth because of the way the bolt is designed. Uh, I've never heard of a problem with triggers. This is the African model, and I think that Weatherby put together a home run when they made this African model. It's been around a long time, and as I was saying at the beginning, I kind of was always dreaming of owning a Weatherby African model, and they did everything right. It's got a proper recoil lug. Um, it's, it's, it's strong. There, you're gonna you if you haven't already heard the stories they say you know they put pressure loads in here to 200,000 psi which is fine um, it's a little bit like the Ferrari that goes 400 miles an hour or whatever and I don't know that that actually is possible but it could be but where are you going to do that um, same with the weather it's more than strong enough obviously for all the cartridges it fires having said that I've owned several several Mausers chambered in Weatherby cartridges, and a Mauser 98 has no problem handling those pressures. Anyway, that's the Mark V. I don't know if you can you know, look at it. I guess we did our best filming it. Uh, but a lot of you are buying 
the Vanguard. So I went in the vault. Um, you know, guns are coming and going, but this is actually the uh, 243, uh, beautifully made action. Two locking lugs, you can see them here. And I think that the bolt handle is part of the bolt. Um, I, I've never heard of a Vanguard that hasn't been anything except an exceptional rifle. Probably the best buy on the market. I think I said that in my first video. And now some of you are really tuned in, so you can see this is kind of glass bedded. And you'll pick up that this actually is the same as a Weatherby Vanguard, very similar, but it's m marketed by Smith & Wesson, so it's slightly misleading. But if you bought a Hawa, a Weatherby Vanguard, a Smith & Wesson, and I even had a Mossberg, like different companies marketed, those superb made in Japan Hawa rifles. So this is the short action Smith & Wesson that is actually also a current Vanguard and they're all made by Hawa in Japan. Maybe some of you are wondering what this is all about. This came with this rifle and it's this cool kind of conversion. If you're planning on doing some range shooting or you miss whatever you're shooting at a lot then I guess you need all these rounds. So, and I have the original floor plate too. That goes together here. Uh, and then here's a fantastic rifle. This is an actual Weatherby Vanguard long action. You can see two locking lugs, and some people say it's a Sako style extractor, and probably that's a good way to describe it. And um, everything is the way it should be. This one is fantastically accurate, and did I put 240 on the cartridge board? I did. If you can focus on this, this is 240 Weatherby, and this is a 243 Winchester. So once again, um, this by the way is not based on any other cartridge. You can see the double radius here, uh, shoulder, and the tremendous amount of powder for the 243 size bullet. So you get very high velocity. It may still be the highest velocity, but I'm not sure. My, my 243 WSSM may be faster and maybe the 6mm 284, I don't know. But, you know, I lose track because it's like leapfrogging. Somebody's always faster than, than somebody else. Uh, but 240 Weatherby, actually just a wonderful round for deer hunting, and some people use it for other things. And before you stop watching, have a look at this orphan round here. And... Um, all you cartridge experts, I'm going to show you at the end of the video what this is, but try to guess what cartridge this is. This is actually based on viewer requests. This is a cartridge that not many people know about. This is not a pistol cartridge, although it could be, or a revolver cartridge. It's mostly a single shot rifle cartridge, but I'll tell you at the very end of the video what that is. It's got a cool history. So I went to the trouble of digging it out for you, and uh, hopefully you'll um, appreciate the, the coolness of that little round. So whether it be Vanguard, two locking lugs, um, you know, floor plate, everything, just, so again, is, is, is there a bad Weatherby rifle? I don't, I don't think so. Uh, very smooth. I wouldn't mind if there were iron sights, but they're not that common. So I think we've covered all the ground that I wanted to cover. You had a look at the short action. You had a look at the Mark V. I'll see whether I can um, get this Mark V together for you. Oh, and one other thing I wanted to mention is, um, thanks for all your comments and concern about the tremor I have, which I've talked about in, in prior videos. I was just born with this tremor. Uh, it comes and goes. I don't have Parkinson's. I probably am going to cling to life a little longer, but it probably is apparent, and I'm very sorry if it bothers you. Um, I have no control over it. Uh, it's like a lot of things. Anyway, um, obviously we're, we're not perfect beings, and I'm very imperfect, but yeah, so the tremor, thank you. And um, there it is. That's the African, I think. It's one of the nicest rifles available on the market. 
even today, that quarter rib. And if you go to order a custom rifle with all these features and they don't have the Weatherby name, um, you'll pay more than you will for this rifle. And they, they've got the Monte Carlo stock. A lot of people like that design and it's a very practical design. So anyway, I hope that covers your questions. There were maybe a half dozen about the triggers as you know, I'm pretty accommodating with triggers. I more or less learned the trigger, but I've never had... I just can't think of much to say about Weatherby that isn't excellent. They're great rifles. And Roy deserves um, like every accolade. I, I don't think he enjoyed vast wealth during his lifetime. There was a lot of risk. He had to raise a lot of money. Uh, but in the end, um, you know, he has... I guess what everybody wants, if, if fame and maybe some kind of immortality through his name, which is great. Um, so now we get to the cartridge, so um, it's too bad I can't speak with you. But yeah, that, that, where's the box? That is a 310 Cadet. And people will say, what the heck is a 310 Cadet? So that box of ammo, well, I bought five boxes. I was in Sydney, Australia, and I bought a Cadet Martini rifle. And there's a little gun shop in Sydney, or there was, and I bought those rounds from them. And I, I you know, I can't see the back because it's covered by this label here, but um, I think this is probably loaded in Australia because they had so many of those Cadet rifles. And uh, I, you know, they keep changing to 22 Hornet and 222 Rimmed. I, I still like the Cadet and the original chambering. I see nothing wrong with the 310 Cadet. I used that cartridge for three years. Anyway, so there's your mystery cartridge of the day. I hope this wasn't too disjointed. Um, and I actually got the Mark V back together again. And uh, as always, thank you for watching. And please do what you can to help this modest channel and we'll see you on the next video. Take care out there.